we explain global warming and what you can do about it. Tom is shocked. The media is reporting the consequences of the hurricane on the Philippines. More than 5,000 people have died. Entire cities are flooded and devastated. But that's not all. The next report is about a famine in the Sahel. Because of a drought that lasted for months, the harvest has been exhausted and food is scarce. Is it possible that catastrophes like that are on the increase? Tom asks his friend Mary for advice. She explains that these extreme weather phenomena are getting worse due to changes in climate. But where does this warming come from? The greenhouse effect is the bad guy. The atmosphere protects the earth and stores the heat of the sun, as in a greenhouse. This is especially caused by the greenhouse gases, steam, carbon dioxide, and methane. This effect is actually essential to life. Without it, the temperature on Earth would be well below freezing. Industrialization increased this effect to a dangerous level. So the real bad guy is man, and the warming is getting worse and worse. When polar ice and glaciers melt, they reflect less sunlight and the sea level rises. Millions of coastal inhabitants are in danger. Additionally, water evaporates, which increases the greenhouse effect. Also, grounds, which stored centuries-old methane, are thawing. The poisonous gas escapes and worsens the greenhouse effect. The vicious cycle starts again. That's how the average temperature on Earth rose in the last century to around 0.74 degrees Celsius, which does not sound like a lot, but has devastating consequences. Because the whole weather system changes, millions of people and countless animal and plant species are in danger of extinction. To stop this, scientists worldwide agree the emission of greenhouse gases has to be reduced. It starts with everyone individually, even Tom. But what exactly can he do? Thanks to Mary, Tom chooses energy-saving electronic devices and unplugs them after use. Also, he's improved the thermal insulation of his house to heat it more efficiently. And as often as he can, he takes the bus or bike instead of the car. Tom's taking care of the environment. Now it's your turn. It's called climate modification, or geoengineering, and it's considered by some as a viable but drastic way to combat global warming. What exactly is it? These options range from a $4 trillion solar umbrella made up of 15 trillion little mirrors to reflect sunlight away from Earth and lower the planet's temperature to a $400 million a year man-made volcano that shoots massive amounts of sulfur up into the atmosphere to block sunlight and cool the planet down. But will they work? Yes, these geoengineering ideas will work. And some scientists believe, despite the expense, we should try them. But most agree that it just treats the symptom and is not a cure. Because basically, no one knows exactly what will happen as a result. Back during the presidential campaign, Barack Obama talked about fighting climate change by suggesting at times limits on how Americans could set their thermostats inside of their home. Uh, now the new White House science advisor is talking about much more ambitious ideas, using technology to reset the Earth's climate ourselves, controlling our weather. Is this really possible? Uh, Pat Michaels, climatologist, he wrote a book called Climate of Extremes, Global Warming Science They Don't Want You to Know. How are you, sir? Good morning to you. I'm just fine. This is certainly a kooky idea, I have to admit. Kooky. <laughs> We haven't serious? heard that. Well, you know, it's also time. not Let new. Let me just set the stage for you, okay? This gentleman by the name of, hang on one second, John Holdren, Okay, he, he has this idea for how you can go in the atmosphere, literally into space and alter the weather. Now, what is his plan? Let's explain that first. 
Uh, the idea is if you took some missiles or whatever and spread, it spread sulfate aerosol, it's the same, same kind of thing that comes out of a smokestack in, in an uncontrolled power plant that we call pollution. See, we, we put this into the stratosphere and it reflects away the sun's radiation and it counters the effects of carbon dioxide in the lower atmosphere causing global warming. So you counter the global warming. Uh, it's not the first time it's been proposed. Actually, uh, in the old communist Soviet Union, they had a, a state-type climatologist named Budiko who proposed that aircraft be given flares on their or wingtips and that they fly low in the stratosphere and that this would counter any possible effects so of global the, warming. So the, the Soviets had tried this before? What, what, was it effective for they them? They proposed it. They proposed it. They most certainly did. Uh, it's nothing new and, you know, it. I, I would love to see the environmental impact statement on this. We have no idea what this would really do. We could, you know, our computer models give us large ranges of what something like this might do. But imagine if somebody in Kansas says, hey, wait a minute, I didn't get my normal rain for five years, and I'm blaming the fact that we put this junk in the stratosphere. Secondly, it would have to be a major international agreement. Do you think the Europeans who won't eat genetically engineered food are going to allow the United States to put junk in the Probably stratosphere? A big old fat chance say on that. There, there is this thing they call cloud seeding, S-E-E-D-I-N-G. And right. they, they put droplets in the clouds to create rainwater. Now, is this far afield from that? Uh, this is much, much bigger than that. Uh, cloud seeding tends to work in, in warm uh, kind of thunderheads down in, down in the tropics where you put something in them that makes raindrops coalesce uh, or, and, and you get more rain out of it. Uh, this is a much less proven technology and also brings a great question up that we've got to ask. What is that? Okay. <laughs> what temperature do you want the surface of the Earth to be? Well, Megan and I it. just no, decided on. on 72 degrees, ocean blue skies, no humidity. Light breeze. Why can't <laughs> I'd like that. <laughs> well, in, in the I'd afternoon. like that, but I'd love to see the that? international... I'd love to see the international discussion on what it should be. Should it be what it was after the end of the last ice age when it was a, a few degrees warmer? I said warmer than it is today. Or should it be where it was before we started to burn fossil fuel? Let's talk about what is really happening with the climate and what we really need to be concerned about. You do not need to be concerned with global warming. It does not exist. It ended years ago. Please spread that word. So what is happening with the climate? What is happening is exactly as I predicted it would in April and May of 2007, when I notified the White House and NASA, Congress, and the mainstream media. The Earth is going into many decades of very cold weather. It happens every 206 years on a cycle of the sun that is 206 years long, give or take a few years. That's what's happening. We know that has already begun, and we know it, as you can see from this chart. We measure it by sunspots, number one. A simple count of the sunspots drives the 90% accuracy on this model. All you have to do is follow the sun, connect the dots, by following the sun's dots or spots, and you know what's going to happen. It's that simple. This simple rule was set aside by the UN 20 years ago in the first UN report when they said the sun doesn't have any role. There's no need to track sunspots. It doesn't have any role. There's no need to track total solar irradiance. It varies too little to be a real indicator. They already had lots of bad science, yes. All of these indicators that I'm showing on this chart tell you that a solar hibernation has begun. Not only did NASA confirm it, but earlier this year, the U.S. Air Force and the National Solar Observatory have also indicated we're heading into a solar hibernation. And some of them said it's going to be worse than even I predict. It's going to be another little ice age when you could walk from Ellis Island to downtown Manhattan over frozen water when you could walk across the frozen Thames River in London, when you could walk across much of the Baltic where they used to build hotels and stores on the frozen Baltic Sea because it was that cold year-round. 
we need to be very careful and prepare for what is coming. This, are, these, this chart and this list are just some of the indicators that we know that it's come. Typical sunspots, some of these are larger than the Earth. This is a blow up. Now here's the chart that I wanted to get to. It shows you the track of sunspots. If you follow the 30 year average line in black, you'll see the Maunder minimum. And by the way, these low solar hibernation periods are given the name of a scientist who was most vocal or best documenting of that era. Okay, Mr. Uh, Dr. Maunder and uh, John Dalton, the founder of the atomic theory, famous scientist, documented much of the temperature fluctuations in that period and were given the names. But basically, the Maunder minimum is right in the middle of the Little Ice Age. I'm saying it's going to be as cold as the Dalton minimum. We have just passed through the modern maximum. That's when the population of polar bears grew by 300%. And now we're heading down. I'll show you that chart, although it's posted on the back of the table as well. This is a chart uh, from an associate who's been very helpful in coming up with the exact mathematical formula for my RC theory and the sun's cycles. I told him I don't need the theory today, but I do need your chart. Here's the chart. It shows going back to the last solar hibernation in here. And then it shows the fluctuations over time. If you look at the year 2030, 2031, which is what I calculated mathematically, that is the next low point. If you also look at that, you will see it is low or lower than in 1800. We're now about to enter a cold period that we have not seen for 200 years. Again, as I mentioned previously, there, there is no one alive today. And even if your grandparents and great-grandparents were alive and in here today, I could make this statement. There is no one alive today who's been through the depth and extent of the extreme cold we're about to face. This is a blow up of that final period. It shows declining from a uh, and this is a sunspot count, not a temperature, and I have an important point to make. Sunspots peaked in this area and are going to decline. When they're at their bottom, that's when the cold is. The temperature curve is different. There's a lag of about 30, 35 years in the temperature curve. My theory, the RC theory, relational cycle theory, is a cold weather climate theory. It's not about the warmth. It tells you when it's going to be cold. And that's the one I need to be concerned about. Because I'm not concerned whether polar bears are growing out of their bounds. I am concerned whether we've got enough food. And right now, I'm concerned that the coal is going to ruin much of our crops. And we'll get to that. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. how, how does this affect uh, solar energy? Now, they're going to this solar energy. If we get into a low part, is, uh, okay. is the, the sun going to be colder? You're not going to notice enough on a day-to-day -day basis. The sun is still going to deliver about 1,300 watts per meter squared. That's like having your microwave next to another microwave, as far as the eye can see, running every day. You're still going to get a lot of energy. It's the atmosphere and the oceans that are going to cool. This cooling has already started. This is the 100-year chart of global temperature. These next two charts will prove my point. If you look in the upper right, you'll see the curve has reversed. We're now heading down again. A steep downward curve like that happens only every 206 years. Look in the 1940 to 1980 range. You'll see it was cold. The Earth was cooling for 40 years. Somehow the global warming community lost that. But now we've reached the pinnacle, the peak, and now we're headed down. This chart shows the last 30 years. It shows you exactly where the peak occurred. By my calculations and previously announced between 2005 and 2007. Here's the killer chart. The last 10 years. Down. Make no mistake about it. And if you extend this chart back to 2008, I'm sorry, 1998, 13 years of declining temperature. There's no growth in global warming for 13 years. There is no global warming. It's a myth. We need to tell our politicians, our leaders, to stop selling us this myth and start dealing with the truth. 
the Earth has been cold and cooling for 13 years. Uh, yes, we're having multiple effects all descend on us at the same time. The 206-year cycle is the key driver, but under that you have many other cycles. They're also happening at the same time. That includes the La Nina cycles kicking back in earlier than people estimated. I did calculate that and estimated it would kick in when it did, when it is, and it does. Yes, ma'am. According to research done by myself and other scientists at the SSRC, when these cold cycles hit, we get the world's largest volcanic eruptions and largest earthquakes. It's going to be three barrels off of one gun, and all will produce harmful effects. Space.com, I read on Space.com, they predicted earthquakes happening in the Pacific because of solar things with the sun. Two or three don't, days before Don't be happened, confused with that. A lot of people are out there saying every time a solar flare hits the Earth, we get an earthquake or volcano. The data doesn't support it. What I will tell you is the macro data supports it. The solar cycles support it over a long-term trend. What we're working on and what others are working on is refining the predictive capabilities on especially earthquakes. We're getting better at it, or much better than most people think, but we're not there yet. We need to listen, John. No global warming. It's getting colder. We're going to start losing our crops. But the worst year will be 2031, and I need everyone's support to stand your ground. Tell your newspaper, your TV, your politicians, whoever is telling you they're going to impose controls or taxes on you because of man-made global warming, there is none, and don't you do it. Thank you very much. Thank you, John.